both online and offline, and what kinds of posts do they feel are appropriate to be sharing. So we found two things, um, and this was done using a survey study of 205 parents and um, an interview study with 18 parents, and we've subsequently done a number of more uh, interviews with parents, so it's sort of aggregating that data. So we found that they joined two kinds of um, Facebook groups. One is geographically based Facebook groups. Um, these are things like local community groups, for example, Ann Arbor Autism Group on Facebook, where they can find other parents who can um, provide them resources, for example, what school resources they need to access, how to access health care, how to get support face-to-face um, uh, -face from local parents. The second was case-based groups. So these bring together parents of children who have similar conditions. For things like autism and ADHD, these are fairly easy to find, these kinds of groups online. You can search Facebook and find thousands of autism Facebook groups. For more obscure um, diseases, these are much harder to find. And so these tend to be national or even international, um, where they, their children's been diagnosed with um, a rare disease, for example. They'll go to Facebook and look for other parents who have been through the same process. So we asked what sites parents use to talk about their children's special needs. 89% um, of them used Facebook, so their own Facebook profiles and walls um, and networks. 51% used private Facebook groups. 42% used Yahoo uh, Answers. 35% used public face group, Facebook groups. 28% um, used Yahoo groups. And 27% used Twitter. And this is to talk about their children with special needs. Okay, so one of the questions we had was, how do parents um, experience judgment online as well as offline um, in these sites and in their different sort of everyday contexts? So we asked survey participants about different interaction contexts, things like with doctors and nurses, um, email listservs on, 